HTTP3 is the newest member of the protocol family and it's meant to replace its predecessors. It is the new standard for the web and it promises to be faster, more reliable and more secure. While it's still being developed, it is already supported by all major browsers. But first, how did we get here? Before we dive deeper into HTTP3, let's have a quick look at the evolution of HTTP over the years. This will help us to better understand why HTTP3 is needed. It all started back in 96 with the publication of HTTP1 and it defined the basic specification of HTTP as we know it today. However, the main issue with HTTP1 was that for each request response exchange between the clients and the servers, a new TCP connection had to be created. If a web page requires 10 JavaScript files, the web browser needs to retrieve those 10 files before the page can finish loading. To work around this, browser can open multiple TCP connections to the server to retrieve the data in parallel. But this approach is resource intensive. In addition, all requests will have a latency penalty as the TCP and TLS handshakes are completed before each request. Worse still, rather than sending all data as fast as possible once the connection is initiated, TCP protocol requires a warm-up period before each connection. This is used to allow the TCP algorithm to know how much data it can handle when a congestion happens. A few years later, HTTP 1.1 tried to solve these problems by introducing the concept of keep alive connections that allow clients to reuse TCP connections and thus improve the cost of the initial connection setup. But this was no silver bullet. While multiple requests could share the same connection, they still had to be serialized one after the other. So, the client and the server could only execute a single request response exchange at any given moment. As the number of resources required by each website increased over the years, browsers found themselves needing more and more concurrency when fetching and rendering web pages. But since HTTP 1.1 only allowed clients to do one HTTP request response exchange at a time, the only way to gain concurrency at the network level was to use multiple TCP connections. Thus, the benefits of Keep Alive connections were basically lost. While connection would still be reused to a certain extent, we were still back at square one. Finally, more than a decade later came HTTP2 and it introduced the concept of multiplexing among other things. So, a client could request all 10 files at once and start downloading them all in parallel over a single TCP connection. But yet again, this was no silver bullet. HTTP2 solved the original problem, that is, inefficient use of a single TCP connection. However, if only a single request is affected by pocket loss, then all requests and responses are equally affected by the pocket loss. This is because TCP has no knowledge of the HTTP2 multiplexing. The role of the TCP is to deliver the entire stream of bytes in the correct order from one endpoint to the other. When a TCP pocket carrying some of those bytes is lost on the network path, it creates a gap in the stream and TCP needs to fill it. It does so by resending the affected pocket when the loss is detected. However, while doing so, none of the successfully delivered bytes that follow the lost one can be delivered to the application. Even if they are not themselves lost, and even if they belong to a completely independent HTTP request. This problem is known as head-of-the-line blocking. In fact, in a high-loss pocket environment, HTTP 1.1 performs better because of the multiple parallel TCP connection that the browser opens. This is where HTTP 3 comes into play. Instead of using TCP as the transport layer for the session, it uses Quick. This is a new internet transport protocol, initially developed by Google, which, 
among other things, introduced streams at the transport layer. Quick streams are delivered independently, such that in most cases, pocket loss affecting one stream doesn't affect the others. This is possible because quick pockets are encapsulated on top of UDP datagrams. UDP itself is a connectionless protocol and therefore technically unreliable. This means that pocket can get lost. However, Quick identifies the lost data and then retransfers the missing bytes to ensure a seamless user experience. Also, since Quick uses UDP, there is no need to complete a complex three way handshake to initiate the first connection. The protocol includes initiating encryption and the exchange of keys into the initial handshake process. It takes only one round trip to establish a path for communication instead of multiple round trips just to establish a connection. Also, encryption and authentication are provided by default. To see what sort of performance difference HTTP3 makes, benchmark tests should be done. One such benchmark test considers three kinds of scenarios. One small site, a content-heavy site with lots of images and some JavaScript files, and a single page application but heavy on the JavaScript. You can find the benchmark source in the link in the description. Then, these three kinds of applications were deployed to a web server. First, the server was configured using HTTP2 and TLS 1.2. Then, the same server was configured using HTTP3 and TLS 1.3. Afterward, the web server was installed in three separate data centers hosted in different locations. The tests were conducted from a client in the US. Here's the response times of HTTP2 versus HTTP3 when making requests to three different sites deployed on a data center in New York. The distance considered here is pretty small by networking standards. However, even at a relatively short distance, HTTP3 was able to improve performance this much. Then, the benchmark is done from the US to London. As you can see, the speed increase here is even more pronounced when greater distances over the network are in play. Finally, the performance improvement with HTTP3 is extremely pronounced when loading pages from the server in India, that is, when larger geographies and more network hopes are involved. As a website owner, it may be the time to enable HTTP3 for your site if you haven't already and if your cloud provider supports it. On the other hand, as an internet user, you are probably already using HTTP3 for many domains. The big tech players like Google and Facebook and others are serving their traffic over HTTP3 already. HTTP3 can make a big difference in how users experience your site. In general, the more resources your site requires, the bigger the performance improvement you'll see with HTTP3 and Quick. As the standard continues to inch closer to its finalization, it may be the time to start looking at enabling for your sites.